Well, there's one thing I do have in common with this movie. I also have no words. What is up, guys? Welcome to my review of the latest Christmas action film, Silent Night. But perhaps even more notable than having yet another Christmas action film is that we finally have another American action film directed by action legend John Woo, who has not made a movie in America in like 20 years. I think Payback was the last movie that he did, which I'm one of the rare people who actually enjoys that one. So it's been a while. You know, John Woo is somebody that exploded onto the scene with his Hong Kong cinema action films, Hard Boiled probably being the, the most notable one, came over into America, got even more popularity over here with things like Broken Arrow, Face Off, which is still my favorite movie of his, and even Mission Impossible 2, which has now kind of regressed into being a movie people mostly lambast and make fun of. But I still have my fun with that one. I still think it's, it's a decent Mission Impossible movie. You know, you speed up through the slow-mo scenes, you can get through it in about 35 minutes. And so this is hopefully his big triumphant return, his reclaiming of the throne of one of the action juggernauts working today. And for those that may not know, my favorite movie of all time is Die Hard. So my favorite movie of all time is a Christmas action film. I loved Violent Night that we got last year. If you want to count things like the original Lethal Weapon, you know, movies that are set on Christmas, but don't necessarily have the thematic elements of Christmas woven in. Those are classics too. It is very easy to win me over with a Christmas action film. If it's violent, if it's bloody, if you really embrace the holiday, if you got a kick-ass actor in the lead role, which I absolutely love Joel Kinnaman, so go ahead and check that box. These types of movies, very easy win for me, okay? This is a layup. You could go through production with your eyes closed, walking backwards, and you still have a pretty good chance of me at least recommending your movie. Which is why I left the theater last night pretty surprised, borderline shocked that I did not like this thing at all. So starting off with the positives, the main one, well, yeah, really the only one for me is Joel Kinnaman. I fucking love this guy. I think he is an awesome actor. I have been a massive fan of his ever since The Killing, which is a really great show you should check out. I think that everything I've seen him do he has been great in it. Whether the movie is good or not, he is always among the best parts of it. And I just feel so bad for this guy. The luck that he has had, or perhaps just poor choices that he has made as far as his selection of films. Because you got things like the RoboCop remake, which I like, but definitely was not accepted by audiences and was not a success whatsoever. You got Suicide Squad, which was financially successful, but is known as being one of the worst DC films. And then you got the much better one that James Gunn directed that was a financial flop because of COVID and because of the, the brand recognition from the previous Suicide Squad movie. Everything that this guy does, it seems like just doesn't quite hit the way that I think he deserves. And this is yet another notch on the belt of movies that get a great performance out of Joel Kinnaman that it quite frankly doesn't deserve. This guy is great at showing his emotional depth as an actor. He is great at having like charisma and having some swagger to him and really delivering on good lines of dialogue, especially when it taps into his natural charm. I think that physicality wise, he's very capable. So when I saw him on the poster of this movie, and that's gonna be our lead for this Christmas action film, he was the one thing I was not worried about. And this performance in particular asks a whole lot out of him because his character never utters a single line of dialogue throughout the entire film. And we're gonna elaborate a little bit more on that later, but you know, he's essentially shot in the throat in the opening five minutes of the film, and now the rest of the film, while he's on this path of revenge, he has to do it silently. He is non-communicative. And while on surface you might think that's an easier job for an actor because he doesn't have pages and pages of dialogue to memorize, I would argue that's actually a harder task for an actor because he has to emote, he has to get you to understand his character arc, he has to get you inside of the mind of his character, he has to convey all of that without the use of dialogue, which traditionally is the biggest and easiest way to convey all of that to the audience. So I think it was a really interesting experiment. It was an interesting task for him to take on as an actor. And I don't think you could have asked him to do a better job than what he does in Silent Night. 
But unfortunately, every other element of this movie completely lets down that performance and lets down Joel Kinnaman. First of all, let's just get the cat out of the bag now. I walked into this knowing that Joel Kinnaman was going to be portraying a silent protagonist, but unfortunately, John Woo takes that silent protagonist gimmick and extends it to the rest of the cast of the movie. There's maybe two lines of dialogue that are uttered throughout this entire runtime, and there, you know, there's a radio that gets played at one point, there's a few little spots where people are communicating through text and you get the little visual pop-up bubbles, but there's no dialogue really spoken between any of these characters which just got awkward and weird and silly and extremely gimmicky when it goes beyond the character that has his throat shot. So when you have Joel Kinnaman's wife who doesn't speak anything to him in these emotional scenes where any normal person would open their fucking mouth, when you have the character portrayed by Kid Cudi who is like the, uh, the good detective that unknowingly kind of teams up with Joel Kinnaman by the end of it to take down the bad guys. He never says a fucking word, even when he's at work. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. So it goes from something that could have been really interesting to have a protagonist in a revenge action thriller that can't bring forward his emotions and his revenge and his grief with words. He has to do it with physical performance and it decimates what that potential of that could have been by making it extremely silly and stupid extending it to the rest of the cast. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? And possibly the worst thing you could have done to complement that is that this is a movie that chooses to really put off the action sequences until the last third of the movie. I mean, when I saw the first action sequence of Silent Night, aside from the opening two minutes, I flipped my phone over and I was like, holy fuck, this is an hour into this movie. And don't get me wrong, if you've got compelling characters, if you've got compelling dialogue, if you're doing really good storytelling, you can get away with putting off action to the last act. But this movie doesn't have that because nobody can fucking speak. And so it just wears thin on you immediately. By the first 20 minutes of the movie, it had already ran its course for me. And by then I was like, okay, somebody, please, tell me that the other characters are going to start talking because just sitting around and watching Joel Kinnaman drown himself in a bottle and having these visions of his dead son and looking pissed off and you know then you get into the second act of the movie and it's essentially like a training montage where he's shooting at targets and he's marking off dates on the calendar counting down to when he's going to fuck everybody up like those visuals get so redundant after an hour of them. And one of the most repetitious elements of this movie is this constant reminder that John Woo gives you visually that this guy's son was murdered. And that's you know nothing new to this genre. That's actually probably the most common plot point for a revenge thriller is a guy's child is taken from him. I mean, what better motivation can you have to get the audience on this person's side, no matter how punisher they go by the end of it. But it doesn't need to remind us every six or seven minutes that this young four or five year old boy was shot in his yard. And the amount of times that the movie pauses to show Joel Kinnaman looking off in the distance and seeing some kind of a vision of his son or looking at a young child and it turns into his son or he's staring into his kid's room and he sees his son there. Not only does it lose the emotional impact of that for me, but I'm somebody where that is absolutely my biggest fear in life is the loss of a child. It actually turns the movie into like this misguided, very bleak tone that just sucks any of the enjoyment out of the room to where I can't even really look forward to the carnage in the third act because you've just made me soak in the misery of this character and remind me constantly of the death of a child to where my mood is just destroyed. And I just didn't think it was necessary. Like, you can tell us that in the beginning of the movie. You can have him once or twice throughout the runtime see something that triggers that or that reminds us and him of why he is doing all of this, no matter how dark things get. But we don't need to be reminded to the degree that John Woo reminds us in this movie. And perhaps the biggest disappointment of all is that when you finally get past the hour of exposition and silent characters walking around doing things, when you finally get through all 37 reminders that his child was shot, when you finally get to the third act and the revenge action carnage starts, it's okay at best. 
That was honestly my biggest concern walking into this movie. I mean, John Woo was a legend back whenever he exploded onto the scene, and some of his movies are still among some of my favorite action films of all time, but action filmmaking has advanced significantly since he was on top. And the last couple of movies that he released kind of became mocked as the examples of how not to make action movies anymore. Mission Impossible 2, perfect example. Slow down with all the slow-mo. And so when I walked into this, my concern was, has John Woo advanced his style to be a movie that could be impactful or resonant to today's action setting, today's action climate, today's action filmmaking techniques? And I don't think he did. You know, he scales back the amount of slow-mo. He scales back the amount of John Woo style that he puts in here to make it not quite as in your face as it was in the early 2000s, but you still get elements of that. You still get those classic John Woo slow-mo moments, although most of them are random moments, like Joel Kinnaman putting on a leather jacket or a car taking a right turn. Like, they're not very impactful slow-mo moments. And really the only standout action sequence we get is this fabricated one-shot in a staircase, but it's far from the most effective one-shot that I've seen on an action film in any recent time, because it's very clear where the cuts are. I mean, there's parts where they literally crash zoom on Joel Kinnaman's jacket to fill up the entire screen and quickly zoom out, and it's like, oh, well, there was the cut. So you, kind of, you lose the immersion of that. You lose the magic of what's going on in that attempted one-shot when it's so obvious where the cuts are. You get scenes where he's you know shooting out of a car. You get scenes where you know he's taking a lot of damage and he's slowly taking out dudes one by one in a warehouse. I mean, it's all things that we've seen before, but done in ways that we've seen done better, more interesting, more impactful, grittier, bloodier in the last four or five years. Even the villains in this movie, they're all pretty much like nameless. They could be faceless for all I care because you don't really get to hear any of them talk. You don't get any kind of character development, any personality out of them. It's just random gang member guys. It's just stock NPC style villains. And even the main villain who we constantly cut back to to show that that is the final boss for Joel Kinnaman's character, they do nothing to build this guy up, aside from just him being the one who shoots Joel Kinnaman in the throat in the first two minutes of the movie. Beyond that, you don't know why the fuck this guy is the head of the snake, nor do you care. And the only thing that we get out of him is these constant cutbacks to him dancing with this chick in a Santa robe. That's his character development, I guess. And the last thing that I will say is that for this to be a Christmas-themed action film, it barely does anything with the Christmas setting or the Christmas holiday. It's just, it's set on Christmas. You know, a year prior, the, the events that kick off of this movie was on Christmas. You go through the events of the film until the next Christmas, whenever he is going to take his revenge on everybody. That's about it. There's not any kind of Christmas-themed visuals. There's no Christmas-themed kills. There's barely any Christmas music going on. So it just kind of feels like, again, a tacked-on gimmick. You could have set this any time of the year. This movie wouldn't have changed at all. Like, this is the movie that all of the Die Hard is not a Christmas movie crowd tries to convince you that Die Hard is. I could give you 15 different reasons why Die Hard is a Christmas film. Silent Night, that's the movie you're talking about. It's just set on Christmas. So overall, guys, it sucks because I'm a very easy audience for this. I'm the target audience for this, and this was just a gigantic misfire, to put it lightly. Love John Woo's early stuff. Absolutely adore Joel Kinnaman. I really hope that he gets a kick-ass movie that just really succeeds financially and critically one day because he deserves it. He is A-list level and just keeps getting stuck in movies like this. So if you're an action fan like me, I would say wait and stream this at most, but it, it just confused me and baffled me to the degree that I really can't recommend anybody watch it. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed that, please click over here for all of my 2023 new release reviews so far, coming towards the end of the year, so that playlist is about to be complete. Like, share, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this, and you can check out everything in the future. Please, as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.